right, so uh, I would like to uh, thank everybody for showing up this early in the morning, and uh, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, uh, giving me the opportunity to speak here. So uh, uh, there's a small change of title compared to the program, Geometric Set Theory. This is the title of the book that we are writing with Paul Larson, and uh, that is available in relations. Uh, and uh, uh, get uh, um, uh, some sort of uh, non-reducibility or ergodicity results uh, about uh, uh, these um, uh, uh, equivalence relations. And among other things, uh, we have uh, uh, a restatement and a, a broad generalization of uh, uh, Hort's turbulence, uh, uh, which is uh, really uh, should be viewed as a geometric concept and. Uh, uh, you know, it's much easier to understand it in that uh, uh, in that light. Well, but uh, things really picked up in January when, uh, 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 with Paul, we realized that uh, these uh, geometric uh, considerations they really uh, fit well with the uh, uh, pro project, the older project that we had uh, about. Uh, um, uh, independence results in ZF set theory, and uh, uh, so uh, what, uh, the, uh, what, what um, uh, it allows us to do is to look at uh, uh, the symmetric Solvay model, the, the, the choiceless uh, model from uh, uh, obtained from an inaccessible cardinal, and then uh, uh, then study the natural generic extensions uh, of it, and uh, it uh, allows us to uh, uh, to um, great detail. Uh, and uh, also uh, there are some uh, ZF provable theorems that, uh, that um, uh, you can obtain of uh, using uh, the, the geometric considerations. Uh, and uh, so, so these are kind of the two uh, basic uh, uh, things, but uh, there are many other applications, there are many other directions that were uh, open. We could go. In particular, there's some. Uh, 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 there is a way of stating examples on LF1 in terms of uh, uh, some sort of ge uh, geometric uh, uh, um, uh, uh, language, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, in principle, this is really a uh, uh, well, you know, wide-reaching uh, uh, area. Okay. So uh, one thing about it is that it's completely and absolutely enormous. Okay, so uh, I will uh, you, know, you will have to excuse me. Uh, that there are no proofs really in, in, in this talk, uh, even though in some cases you will probably uh, you would want to know how, how these things are proved. But uh, it's more or less a, a conceptual guide because uh, the, the the concepts that uh, we eventually distilled and isolated there. They're not complicated, but uh, I don't think uh, uh, they existed before, and uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, more or less what I'm going to do. Okay, uh, so um, so I will uh, start with this uh, uh, with this uh, 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 the topic A. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, there are several conf configurations of uh, models of. Uh, 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 of set theory that uh, uh, that uh, we are going to uh, look at in this uh, in this talk, and uh, uh, so the, the the first one is the absolutely simplest one. Okay, uh, so I want to uh, uh, I want to start uh, really from uh, the, the simplest uh, uh, um, uh, situations. Um, uh, this is the one that uh, first of all is the simplest to study, and second of all it, it kind of repeats itself later on. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so this is the first geometric diagram. Uh, you have some sort of ground model uh, V, uh, uh, and um, uh, V is probably a model of ZFC. But uh, I don't necessarily insist on the choice uh, uh, component of it. Okay, uh, and uh, and then there are two uh, uh, then there are two uh, uh, mutually generic ears to it. Okay, uh, VG zero and VG one. Okay, so they're uh, mutually generic. 
And uh, because we are going to uh, look at really equivalent solutions, so there will be a Borel equivalent solution or analytic one uh, E, which uh, is coded in uh, in V. And uh, uh, these these two uh, these two ears, they uh, they see a representative of the same uh, uh, equivalence class. Okay, and we would like to see if it is necessarily the case that uh, that that, that uh, uh, equivalence class is uh, uh, represented somewhere in V. Okay. Uh, you know, given an equivalence relation, you would like to see if it's possible to uh, build those ears such that they do uh, contain, uh, uh, they do uh, uh, see uh, the same equivalence class, but V doesn't see it, for example, okay, and things like that. So, uh, so, uh, so this is, uh, 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 so this is uh, the, the first uh, diagram that we are going to look at. Uh, again, uh, uh, later on in the second talk, you will uh, uh, see that uh, you know this equivalence relation uh, uh, um, uh, context is the simplest that you can consider. Uh, you can uh, uh, really uh, think about many other things there. Uh, so, uh, so I will. Um, uh, so, what is interesting about this diagram is that mutual genericity has. Again, uh, some sort of geometric restate, uh, restatement. It's not a deep theorem, okay, that uh, is on top of it, but it is, uh, uh, it, it, it is good to know. And I didn't find it anywhere, uh, so uh, uh, so it's stated here. So uh, th these ears, they are mutually generic, uh, uh, if and only if. And now you say something that doesn't have anything to do with forcing at all. Uh, if you have two uh, um, uh, s subsets of V, uh, which are in the uh, uh, respective ears, and their intersection is empty, then they can be separated by set in V. Okay, uh, and uh, this is very easy to show. Also, you can uh, uh, characterize in a similar way, you know, finite uh, collections of mutually generic ears and. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, this is a, a really neat. Uh, one thing that uh, you can see immediately that uh, 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 that mutual genericity is inherited by passing to submodels, right? Because this is a, uh, some sort of <clears throat> universal statement. Also, it's independent of the choice of the generic filters. But also, uh, it allows uh, uh, you know funny manipulations. Uh, uh, like, uh, well, you know, these sets A0, A1, they're well, subsets of ordinals, and maybe uh, you can have a gradation of mutual genericity uh, uh, depending on how high uh, uh, these, uh, these sets are allowed to be cho uh, chosen. Also, uh, the, uh, the, the characterization, uh, uh, this, this, this characterization doesn't speak about uh, genericity, so, uh, uh, so you could uh, consider you know, two ears, and they're not necessarily generic extensions of the ground model, and still you have, uh, you know, some good notion of mutual genericity, which would be probably uh, maybe non-forking or something of, uh, of arbitrary extensions, okay? Well, we do not have any useful examples of this, but, uh, you know, I think it's uh, just waiting there uh, uh, for someone to, uh, 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 to discover something, okay? so. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, so uh, the, uh, the, this diagram leads to the, the concept of virtual quotient space, uh, which is kind of uh, this is really useful to uh, to have around uh, if you deal with equivalence relations of certain type. Uh, so, uh, so let me just uh, introduce the virtual quotient space. So, E is an analytic equivalence relation, and a pair Q tau is an E pin uh, if Q is a partial order. Tau is an ele is a name is a Q name for an element of the Polish space X, and Q times Q forces that uh, tau left is equivalent to tau right. Okay, so this is a concept that uh, was iso uh, you know, present in uh, 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 Greg Hort's uh, uh, work uh, a number of years ago, and. Uh, uh, but uh, what we want to do, uh, 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 you know, this is a kind of a basic example. So, uh, so, so you look at the space X equal to uh, 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 omega sequences of reals and let two of them be equivalent if they have the same range. And then, uh, then Q, uh, uh, let Q be the co-op, suppose that uh, something that enumerates the, uh, the ground model reals in order type omega, and tau is the uh, name for the uh, generic enumeration. So of course, uh, look, uh, uh, no matter what generic you take, uh, 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 
uh, they are going to be equivalent, right? Because uh, they are going to be two, uh, uh, two um, uh, uh, sequences of reals that enumerate the ground model, okay? And uh, so their ranges are going to be the same. Uh, so uh, what is important here is that uh, uh, there is a, uh, some sort of natural equivalence on these, uh, uh, on these pins, and then uh, that leads to the concept of a virtual quotient space. So, uh, uh, so you say that two uh, E pins are equivalent, I denote it by E bar. If uh, uh, you know, the, the left pin is Q0 tau 0, the right pin is Q1 tau 1, so if the product Q0 times Q1 forces that tau 0 is equivalent to tau 1. Okay, this essentially means that whenever you take a generic on Q0 and a generic on Q1, uh, then uh, tau 0 over that first generic and tau 1 over that gener uh, second generic, they, they fall into the same equivalence class. Okay? Uh, uh, so, uh, so this is a natural equivalence relation and, uh, uh, on the pins, and uh, then uh, uh, what, you, uh, uh, what you have is the, the, uh, the virtual quotient space, we denote it by x double star, which is the space of all E bar equivalence classes of E pins, okay? And uh, this is some sort of an uh, extension of the, uh, of the quotient space X mod, uh, mod E. Uh, and uh, um, uh, so uh, 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 this is uh, something that uh, I uh, very much like to look at. In, uh, um, uh, so, um, uh, uh, so uh, one observation that I want to make, uh, uh, just uh, you know, is, is one, one thing that is uh, useful, times the case that you have some sort of quotient structures, okay? So, uh, so you will have a Borel relation or a Borel, a Borel function on X uh, uh, such that, uh, uh, you know, it, it's defined modulo E, okay? And then, uh, uh, so, so then uh, uh, these, uh, uh, Borel, such Borel relations and functions, they can be, uh, they have uh, these virtual versions, okay, naturally uh, defined, okay, and then uh, then uh, uh, this quotient structure has this virtual extension, and uh, this uh, this is an, uh, an interesting thing. Uh, uh, so uh, when, you, uh, when you look at the, uh, the the quotient structure itself and the virtual version. Uh, uh, so uh, th there is a natural embedding, okay, which sends each equivalence class to, uh, 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 to somehow itself, uh, okay, and uh, this will be a pi one elementary, uh, 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 pi one uh, elementary uh, uh, embedding. So if you have a quotient group, uh, so it has this virtual quotient group associated to it, okay. If you have a linear ordering, uh, then uh, then. Uh, 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 then uh, you have uh, uh, virtual linear ordering associated to it. A uh, uh, linear order probably doesn't show up all that often. Uh, I mean, the virtual structures that you can get, there, there aren't all that many of them, and they're, um, you know, we don't have all too many complicated examples, but still it's a useful concept, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, that's the next, uh, that's, the, that's the next slide. Uh, Okay, uh, so uh, so the virtual quotient space uh, 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 you have to measure it. Okay, and uh, and the, the thing is that when you measure it, uh, uh, some uh, transfinite uh, set theory uh, comes to play, and it's not all that difficult to see really. And uh, this, you know, many people in model theory understand some parts of this. So uh, uh, so there is an old definition I think uh, uh, due to Canovey, which says. Uh, uh, e is spinned if uh, you know every virtual qua class uh, is really uh, a, a just a, just an e, just an e class, okay? Because that means that any uh, e pin is just equivalent to a pin that points at a specific a specific uh, element of X, okay? Uh, so so that's uh, uh, that, uh, that, that's uh, the, the first possibility in which, uh, of course, this concept doesn't really bring anything. Uh, and uh, it's interesting to see which uh, uh, which equivalence classes, which equivalence relations are pinned. Uh, in if in the context of ZFC, uh, 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 the uh, equivalence relations of actions of uh, uh, CLI groups they're uh, pinned, and uh, the F sigma equivalence relations are pinned. And there are, there are several other uh, theorems uh, to that tune. Uh, and it's really not all that easy to, to characterize the pin equivalence relations, okay? Uh, 
Uh, what is interesting and what is used uh, uh, in our work all the time is that if the constellation is Borel, then, uh, then in fact this uh, quotient space uh, is, uh, is a set, okay? It's a set of size less than beta omega 1 and it can go all the way to beta omega 1, okay? And uh, if it's analytic, then, uh, uh, then uh, the, it can be uh, the, the, the quotient space, uh, the, the virtual quotient, uh, quotient space can be a uh, can be a proper class, but it also can be a set of some large sizes, like uh, uh, certainly uh, R dash cardinals, they show up. Uh, it never uh, jumps over uh, the, uh, the measurable cardinal, okay? And uh, then there are a couple of uh, cardinal invariants that uh, one, can, uh, one can define, and uh, 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 so let me mention this uh, a, a, uh, interesting lambda of, of uh, um, an equivalent relation is just the size of the quotient sp of the virtual quotient space, and there is this interesting kappa. Uh, uh, kappa is the uh, uh, you know uh, you look at all the uh, you look at all the uh, uh, virtual classes and uh, and check uh, at which cardinal they are represented. Okay, uh, so uh, so if uh, if the uh, if the uh, uh, if the virtual quotient space is a set, then kappa is well defined, and uh, so it's uh, the, what, I, what we call the pinned cardinal, and uh, uh, so um, uh, so it's the least kappa such that every virtual class is represented by a name on a post set of size less than kappa. Okay, so uh, uh, so uh, and these cardinals they have the virtue that they respect the Borel. Uh, 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 um, reducibility of uh, equivalence relations, and so you can use them to um, uh, uh, to prove non-reducibility results. And uh, 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 for equivalence relations that are classified by countable structures, this is something that uh, 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 some people in model theory, uh, Laskowski uh, and uh, uh, some others, uh, they, they've, they've been looking at this for a couple of years. And they uh, got a number of results, but uh, uh, but uh, in general, you can really uh, look at uh, the, the the general uh, um, um, context of uh, uh, of Borel equivalence relations, and uh, uh, there uh, this uh, topic is uh, you know broader than uh, the usual uh, horizon of model theory. Uh, so, uh, so what is interesting is the classification of virtual quotient spaces because that gives you a, a lot of information about the uh, the uh, the, uh, uh, the equivalence relation in question. Okay, so uh, so for example, uh, but so, you know there, there are a couple of theorems here that uh, uh, tell you that uh, the classification is simple in some cases, but in very many other cases uh, we have no clue what uh, is going on. Okay, so. So uh, there is a uh, so if uh, for for example the the uh, virtual quotient survives product without change okay if you have uh, a, pro a countable product of uh, equivalence relations and you can uh, classify the virtual spaces for each then you all can also classify the virtual uh, 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 quotient uh, space for the product okay because uh, if uh, a virtual uh, uh, a class for the product equivalence relation is just a uh, is just a sequence of uh, virtual classes of the uh, constituent uh, equivalence relations. Or uh, there is this uh, uh, there is this operation of uh, jump uh, uh, that uh, was introduced by Friedman and Stanley, and uh, uh, this is very manageable. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, so uh, if if you have equivalence relation E. Uh, Let's say uh, the equivalence relation E is on X. The jump of it is on X to the omega, and uh, and two uh, uh, sequences in X to the omega are equivalent if they have the same E saturation. If the ranges have the same E saturation, okay? And uh, uh, and uh, it's easy to classify the virtual classes of E plus so of E jump, and they're just sets of virtual classes of E, okay? Uh, of arbitrary size, okay? Uh, and uh, so, in Borel case, we know that uh, that uh, lambda is less than beth uh, omega one. Uh, so it's in particular, it's, it is a cardinal, and so lambda e plus is two to the lambda e. Okay, and it's bigger than so. This means by Cantor's theorem that it's bigger than lambda e. 
uh, strictly bigger, and so E cannot be reducible to E plus because this lambda cardinal respects uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, here. Lambda is the size of the uh, quotient space. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, and, and this is a very easy uh, uh, way to prove Friedman-Stanley theorem that uh, that uh, uh, there should be E plus is not reducible to E. Okay. There's a typo there. Okay. Uh, uh, e plus is not reducible to E. Okay, so uh, uh, so uh, and it's a, a very easy proof of uh, the uh, uh, of the Friedman-Stanley theorem. Uh, well, th there is an interesting case. If you have an, uh, uh, I should say, um, a quanalytic is enough. If you have quanalytic set of uh, uh, rigid structures uh, on omega, which is closed under uh, uh, is uh, isomorphism. Uh, and then uh, look at the, the E classes. Then, uh, uh, then, uh, then uh, what you get is uh, 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 the virtual E classes are uh, uncountable structures of the same type. Okay, essentially. So, so uh, for example, if E is the uh, isomorphism of ordinals, okay, that's a nice uh, uh, analytic equivalence relation. Uh, then uh, the virtual E classes are just arbitrary ordinals, okay? Uh, there's proper class of them in this case. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, there are several theorems of this type. Uh, uh, this, this really, uh, you know, there's a, a quite uh, some uh, amount of uh, uh, work that the model theorists did on this, okay? But, uh, but for us, uh, uh, what is interesting are the, uh, uh, the equivalence, classes, uh, equivalence relations which are not classifiable by countable structures. And in this case, this is a question that's been bothering me for a really long time, uh, and it's a conceptually interesting thing. Okay, so measure equivalence, uh, so, so you know, two uh, 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 Borel probability measures uh, on the Cantor space are equivalent if they have the same ideal of null sets. Okay, and uh, this is known not to be classifiable by countable structures. So. Uh, what is the virtual quotient space of the measure equivalence? Okay, how can you find uh, uh, some interesting pins? Uh, okay, so so it's a question about uh, finding a, an interesting e pin uh, for uh, uh, for uh, for this measure equivalence. So that means uh, you need to find a name for a measure such such that uh, uh, such that uh, the uh, the null ideal uh, of the you know, of the measure that you're adding doesn't really depend on the generic, okay? And uh, and uh, can you find uh, you know so what kind of uh, names can you add? Uh, can, can you find like that? And and really, I have no clue, okay? I, I mean, there are some trivial uh, cases, and uh, uh, but uh, um, uh, but then uh, the the question is, are there any? Uh, you know, do we see all of them? And uh, and uh, this is a uh, uh, this this is one uh, one um, uh, one question of this type, but there are very many. Okay, uh, so there are uh, equivalence relations where there are maybe natural conjectures what the virtual space is, and uh, in most cases I have no clue how to approach them. Okay, so. Um, uh, there is a little bit uh, uh, to be said about choiceless situations. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, th this uh, this is what occurs when the uh, when the uh, ground model V uh, is not the model of ZFC. Okay, so uh, so uh, 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 you know the quotient space really the nature of the quotient space in many cases depends on uh, 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 whether you have choice or not, and uh, uh, so. Uh, uh, so, uh, in some choiceless situations, it's pretty simple. Uh, so, in the choiceless Solovey model, in the symmetric Solovey model, that's uh, 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 that uh, uh, that's derived from an uh, inaccessible cardinal, then uh, a Borel equivalence relation is unpinned just in case uh, F two this uh, the, the, this equality of ranges uh, reduce Borel reduces to E, okay, which confirms an uh, old uh, conjecture of. Uh, uh, of um, uh, Kekris, and uh, um, I, I don't know if we need uh, an inaccessible cardinal for this, uh, you know, consistency result. It's a ZF plus DC consistency result, if you wish, and we don't know if we need uh, uh, an accessible cardinal. Uh, well, uh, if you don't have DC, then it can happen that even other things are unpinned, and uh, uh, so, uh, so there is a 
canonical model of ZF in which DC fails, in which uh, equivalence relations classifiable uh, 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 by countable structures are unpinned just in case uh, E0 to omega reduces to E, Borel reduces to E. But uh, uh, this classifiability by countable structures may be, uh, yeah? Uh, Borel reduces to E. So F2 is the equivalence relation of uh, equality of ranges. Okay, so uh, so uh, so it's uh, the equivalence relation of uh, on R to the omega. Let's say uh, two omega sequences of reals are equivalent if they have the same range, and uh, it Borel reduces to E. Okay, yeah. What is the other? Uh, uh, other th this one. Uh, th this this one. Uh, uh, so E, e zero, uh, 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 people uh, talked. Uh, what is the model? And now uh, oh, oh, what is the oh, what is the model? Uh, the, yeah, the model is. Uh, uh, okay, I I don't think it has a name. Okay, so uh, uh, but uh, but uh, um, you take a, a countable product of uh, uh, you, you get a countable product of. Uh, um, uh, uh, what I call E0 forcing or the Vitali forcing, where you uh, uh, um, take Borel sets which are uh, uh, on which E0 is not smooth, okay. then you take countably many uh, copies of that, and so it adds an infinite uh, uh, sequence of E0 classes, uh, and you uh, you uh, consider the uh, the choiceless model which adds the reals that are added by the finite products, and then the sequence of E0 classes, roughly, okay? Uh, there are probably uh, some other models that are suspicious, but, yeah? yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. In the first one, uh, Z, uh, DC fail. Uh, they uh, they differ by DC. Okay, the the first one, DC fail. Uh, the DC holds in the Solvay model, and that's uh, because uh, the, this one, if uh, uh, being uh, uh, being unpinned, this can only occur when DC fail, uh, when DC completely fails. Okay, so uh, uh, so uh, so they are quite different. Okay, uh, these uh, uh, the, these uh, situations. Okay, but all right, uh, I want to really uh, uh, drop the subject now and uh, move to another uh, context uh, which is uh, uh, just to do with turbulence even though uh, uh, certainly I, I think absolutely certainly uh, uh, Greg what uh, what, no, 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 in the choice, in the choice case, in the choice case, uh, the ground model doesn't matter, uh, but, uh, but in the choiceless case, it does, okay? Uh, I don't care what? Yeah, then, uh, then, uh, yeah, so, uh, so uh, what is, uh, uh, for Borel equivalence relations E, uh, uh, the status of being pinned or unpinned is absolute uh, between generic extensions, okay? But, uh, but uh, if uh, with ZF, this is not the case, okay? Uh, so in ZF, you can get two models of ZF where different things... Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's a, uh, uh, the choiceless situations, they make it uh, um, quite interesting, really. Okay, so, uh, so the second diagram is, uh, you know, it uh, really, uh, from the point of view of equivalence relations, it has to do with turbulence, even though I'm sure uh, uh, Greg uh, Hort didn't see it that way uh, when he introduced turbulence. So, so what is the, what is the diagram? Uh, it's uh, the picture is the same, but uh, it is a little different. So you have a uh, you have a ground model, and you have two ears, and the two ears are now uh, not uh, 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 assumed to be mutually generic. Each of them is separately generic, uh, uh, but uh, the only thing that we have is that uh, uh, that their intersection, which means it's equal to v. Okay. So uh, and then uh, then the question is, can you get ears like that uh, which see an equivalence class? Uh, 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 both uh, it says there's an equivalence class rep represented in both of them, which is not represented in V. Okay, and uh, uh, so uh, so this is uh, uh, the the first question is how do you build uh, ears like that which are not mutually generic? Okay, and and in fact uh, uh, you know I had uh, a number of the theorems over the years, but then eventually when uh, we were pushed to uh, kind of um, uh, axiomatize everything, then uh, we found a very nice way of producing uh, 
uh, this diagram where the, uh, where the ears are separately generic but not mutually generic. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah, that's right. But but the thing but the thing is uh, the thing is that uh, uh, true. But uh, the thing is that the ears need to be disjoint. Okay, uh, I mean the the, the ear. The, there's this requirement here. Okay, so so how do you produce uh, two uh, uh, two generic extensions which uh, 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 which are mutually uh, which are maybe not mutually generic, but the left ear is disjoint from the right ear. Okay, uh, I mean how do you actually do it? Okay. So and there's a beautiful uh, there's a beautiful gen general theorem uh, which uh, 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 which uh, uh, really uh, uh, has to so, so you will realize that these walks that uh, uh, that Greg has uh, in, in the definition of turbulence they are uh, uh, really they have nothing to do with group actions but they have something to do with this geometric picture okay uh, so uh, so, uh, so I will look at Cohen generic extensions. You, you might think this is uh, the, the, there is nothing there, but in fact, uh, not so. So, uh, so um, uh, what is a Cohen uh, forcing for me? So, uh, uh, so uh, uh, you have an X, uh, which is a Polish space. You associate uh, the uh, uh, Cohen forcing with it, which is the force, uh, forcing of non-empty open subset of uh, X ordered by inclusion. So it adds a generic point, Cohen generic point of the space. Okay. Uh, so uh, there is a way of uh, uh, um, uh, looking at um, um, uh, Cohen uh, uh, generic uh, uh, names for. Uh, now, so uh, uh, from topological uh, uh, point of view, so suppose that X and Y are Polish spaces. And we have a function from x to y, which is continuous and open. And there's a very, you know, very little uh, observation, uh, nothing uh, uh, non-trivial really, is that uh, that uh, in that case, p x, the the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 Cohen forcing associated with x forces the uh, uh, the functional value at the generic uh, uh, to be a p y generic point. Okay, if you have a continuous open map, then uh, the continuous this open map is just a name for a Cohen generic, really. Okay, and then uh, suppose that you have two of these maps. Uh, they're, they're continuous open maps uh, from uh, x to y zero and from x to y one, and we would like to find a criterion which uh, uh, which guarantees that uh, v of this uh, uh, y zero generic uh, uh, intersection v of this y one generic is equal to v. Okay, and it. it, it uh, it, it will normally uh, 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 so, so it will normally uh, 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 yeah. So so how do we uh, you know can we find a criterion which guarantees this? And there is a criterion, and it is uh, it is uh, everyone will immediately recognize turbulence, and uh, it's very it's pretty easy to check. Okay, so. Uh, so suppose that you have two of these uh, continuous. So find what the walk is. Okay, so you have two of these continuous open maps from given X, and a walk is a sequence of points in X. Okay, and, and it's a finite it's a finite sequence such that whenever you make a step from uh, when, whenever you pass from X1 to uh, X, uh, XI to XI plus one, then either you hold on to the F0 value or you hold on to the F1 value, okay? So it's some sort of a crab, a crab walk like that, okay? Uh, along the space, okay? And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, we say that F0 and F1 are independent and now there is a kind of a walk, uh, 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 there's some sort of a walk statement, okay? So let me uh, draw a picture. So, so here is x, and uh, here is uh, uh, here is f zero, and here is f one. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, there's, there's, there's uh, y zero, and there's y one, and um, so this says uh, so they are independent. If whenever you take a non-empty open set uh, uh, in x, okay, which is uh, uh, which is O, then uh, there will be an open set A here. And such that whenever you have two open sets uh, below a uh, uh, below a two non-empty open sets, you will be able to produce a walk inside O such that the uh, uh, such that the first point is mapped into the first uh, into the first set and the last point is uh, 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 is mapped into the second. Okay. 
So, uh, uh, so this looks like it, it is not uh, clearly symmetric. Uh, oh, uh, uh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a curious thing. Okay. It, it looks that it's not so clear uh, whether it's symmetric because uh, 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 when I say there is a walk in all from B0 to B1, I mean that uh, the first point, F0 of the first point is in B0 and F0 of the second one uh, of the last one is in B1. Okay. So it seems like it's not symmetric. Right? But in fact, uh, this definition is symmetric because there's this, <laughs> there's this theorem that uh, uh, the two maps are independent uh, as, as long as they're continuous open maps, just in case the px forces that the two, uh, two generic extensions uh, have trivial intersection. Yeah? So is independence a clearly um, weaker condition than asking that f0 and f1 have no um, Joining in the sense that they're like G0, G1, so that the combination of the Aha. Aha. There must be something to that. Uh, I, I will not give an answer to that. Yeah. I, I, there must be something to it, okay? Uh, but, uh, I'm running out of time, okay? So, uh, so, uh, uh, so and uh, uh, and uh, what uh, what occurs is uh, you, you know now you can uh, when you with this in hand you can co uh, you, you can produce many of these uh, diagrams okay one of them is so so look at two uh, uh, look at pairs of subsets of omega which are uh, uh, pairwise disjoint okay so uh, so it turns out that uh, when you look at the projection into the first and second coordinate they are independent okay so this is a way of forcing two Cohen reals whose intersection is empty, and such that the uh, two ears, uh, they have empty intersection, uh, a trivial intersection, uh, v, v intersection. But uh, what is uh, more important is this turbulence. Uh, uh, so, so look at gamma, it's a Polish group, turbulently acting on, on, on a Polish space Y, and now look at, look at X, which is the set of all triples, Y0, Y1, and gamma, such that gamma dot Y0 is equal to Y1, okay? And uh, the turbulence exactly translates into these two, uh, into the two, uh, into the two maps, y0 and y, uh, uh, the projection into the first coordinate and the second coordinate being independent. Okay, uh, but uh, uh, but this is uh, this is um, uh, 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 this is. Uh, um, you know, uh, this is a central example, but there are very many other ones. I have to, I have to start move. Okay, so so there is an interesting uh, variation for measure, which gives you so uh, so uh, um, uh, so uh, uh, let gamma. Hmm. Uh, okay, uh, so so let gamma act. Uh, so, Okay, uh, so, so uh, gamma is, uh, uh, is a Polish group and it acts on a Polish space X, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, so, so what do we have? Uh, we have some sort of a criterion point here and generic point here, uh, gamma and X, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, so, so that uh, X and gamma X, uh, uh, they, they generate these two ears uh, uh, that, are, that have trivial intersection. But, uh, uh, an interesting uh, question is when can we uh, get this situation such that x is random over x? Okay, and this is a variation for me uh, uh, for measure, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, so suppose that gamma acts uh, uh, on this Polish x such that it preserves a Borel probability measure here, and also a uh, uh, also a metric uh, which we need to be uh, we need it to be ultra metric, but uh, we don't know if really uh, this is necessary. And uh, this action is concentration of measure, and this is something that is uh, somewhat like the uh, uh, and there are these. Uh, uh, Whirly actions of Polish groups, but uh, what does it uh, uh, what does it mean? Uh, you know, there's the unit. Uh, whenever somebody gives you uh, uh, an uh, neighborhood of the unit and uh, an epsilon uh, bigger than zero, then you will be able to find delta. Uh, uh, then you will be able to find delta such that uh, uh, for uh, there exists delta bigger than zero such that whenever you take a ball here of radius it should be less or equal to, or smaller than delta uh, then um, is, uh, b then whenever you take uh, whenever you take a Borel set uh, c subset of b which has uh, a relative mass bigger than epsilon inside uh, inside b 
then uh, when, you, uh, when you look at u dots, uh, when, when you uh, uh, expand c by u, so, uh, so you move, uh, 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 you, move, you look at u times c, it can fall out of b, but, uh, but you just uh, look at the part of uh, u dot c uh, which is in b, so this relative mass is greater than one half, okay? Right. Uh, it's a somewhat mysterious condition, but uh, whoever studied uh, the, uh, the Verley actions can immediately recognize what's going on. And uh, this is an interesting point. So uh, when gamma acts with concentration of measure and uh, x, uh, uh, and you force a, a generic point here and a random point here, then, uh, then, uh, then, this, uh, then this occurs, okay? Uh, an example is uh, where gamma is the summable I ideal acting um, on parser of omega with symmetric difference, okay? But uh, unfortunately, I'm uh, running out of time, uh, so, uh, there's, uh, uh, so, uh, th uh, so there is a class of equivalence relations for which th this, uh, this diagram uh, uh, really cannot occur, and then uh, w what it gives you is that you get an ergodicity result uh, with respect to, uh, you know, whenever you have a turbulent equivalence relation and, uh, uh, and homo, uh, homo, uh, borel homeomorphism to a trim one, then it, uh, then it uh, uh, stabilizes on a, uh, on a, um, uh, stabilizes on a uh, uh, commeager set, and whenever you have a, this uh, variation for a measure, then it stabilizes on a, uh, on a uh, set of positive measure. Okay, I want to really pass to the third diagram, which I'm really, uh, you know, this uh, showed up in the summer, and I'm uh, really proud of it. Okay, so I, I want to, in the last five minutes, I want to uh, show you what it is. Okay, so uh, so um, so so, uh, so this looks like that. Uh, it, it is a it is a sequence of ears which is nested. Okay, it's an infinite sequence in this case, and uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, so. Uh, uh, and the intersection is, uh, I say V, but, uh, uh, but uh, the intersection, uh, we have to pay attention to the intersection, okay? And, uh, and now, uh, now the question is whether you can find, uh, 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 you can find a sequence of points, x0, x1, in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the relevant models, such that they both, are, they are all pairwise E related, does it mean that they, there has to be an equivalence class in V that is uh, uh, related to them all, okay? Uh, and uh, 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 so I, uh, I developed this science of coherent sequences of models, which turned out to be quite, <laughs> Uh, they're quite rich, okay? So, so a nested sequence of these uh, of these models is coherent, and now uh, uh, th th there is something here which essentially says that uh, each model knows about the sequence that's below it, okay? Uh, so, so uh, this uh, the, when uh, when you uh, parse this, this means that uh, v0 knows about the sequence v1, v2, v3, and so on, and uh, uh, v1 knows about the sequence v2, v3, and so on. Okay, so th this is uh, th this is coherence. Okay, uh, the, the intersection of a coherent sequence of, of transitive models is a, a model of ZF. Okay, I, I think they need to be generic extensions. Okay, uh, uh, of one another. I think. Uh, and then, uh, then I found uh, uh, how to uh, how to produce these, uh, uh, these these coherent sequences. And then uh, we started looking at this, and uh, uh, we used uh, we used it uh, you know, for a good so 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 there are all kinds of interesting uh, uh, considerations about uh, these nested sequences. Uh, uh, so a nested sequence is choice coherent if there is a well ordering so, uh, of large parts of the universe such that uh, when you take a uh, restriction of that well ordering to each of these models, it belongs to the it belongs to the, the respective model. Okay. Uh, so uh, so and if you have a, a choice coherent uh, when you have a choice coherent sequence, uh, then uh, then, uh, uh, then the intersection is a is a model of ZFC. And again, it can be produced by taking uh, uh, by taking uh, uh, um, uh, uh, countable support products of partial orders and taking uh, 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 taking the generic extensions which uh, uh, which look at the tails of the products. Okay, but uh, uh, okay, I might have more uh, significant examples if I have a little time. Okay. 
so uh, th there is a uh, 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 th there is a uh, 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 there is a connection with orbit equivalence relations, uh, and uh, let me uh, 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 there's this theorem. If it's a choice coherent sequence of models, and let E be an orbit equivalence relation. If you have a virtual E class which is uh, represented in all the ends, then it's represented in the intersection model, which. Uh, is uh, it's a diff difficult uh, di difficult theorem, but it really uh, shows the distinction uh, between the E1 case because E1 uh, this is the uh, relation on uh, countable sequences of reals connecting two of them uh, if they have the same tail. This theorem for this equation it doesn't hold because you can have an omega sequence of reals which will kind of evaporate as as these as these these nested sequences go down. Okay, so uh, uh, so I think this is my uh, my last slide, but um, I have still one minute left, and I want to uh, share with you the concerns that uh, you know eventually uh, uh, showed up uh, uh, in, in the. Uh, 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 in, in the book, so uh, so you have this uh, 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 choice, uh, let's say choice coherent sequence. Okay, so this is v zero and v one, uh, v two, and now you can look at uh, essentially anything that you get uh, using the axiom of choice. And Hamel basis was our uh, our uh, uh, you know uh, uh, darling for uh, for a while, but uh, you can do uh, you can ask the same question for everything. So so uh, can you have a Hamel basis uh, for the reals such that uh, uh, it's coherent? That means uh, the, it's a Hamel basis in v zero, and, and the intersection of b zero with v one. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, sorry, V1 intersection of V0 is again a Hamel basis in V1, and uh, and uh, v, uh, B2 uh, uh, is equal to uh, V2 intersection B0 uh, uh, B1. Okay, and and this needs to be again a Hamel basis, uh, uh, and the same thing for all n, and the same thing for omega. Really, okay? Can you have it? Okay, can you actually have a non-trivial? Of course, the, uh, the 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 coherent sequence can be trivial, but can you have it in a non-trivial situation? Okay. And the answer turns out no, uh, to be no, and for a reason. Uh, there's something, something about the uh, geometric model theory of of vector spaces that kind of prevents this from happening. Okay, but then you can ask many other things of this type. Okay, so can you uh, can you uh, let's say uh, can you have so, so look at the Borel graph. Okay, and uh, now. Each graph has a maximal uh, maximal acyclic subgraph, right? I mean, it's by axiom of choice. Okay, can you have a sequence like this where th there will be an, uh, a maximum maximal acyclic subgraph of the given Polish graph, such that when you uh, when you uh, uh, look at the intersection to uh, uh, to the uh, to the relevant models, it again is a is a maximal acyclic subgraph. Okay, and and each. Uh, uh, so so, uh, so there will be h two and h uh, one and and, uh, and you can ask this about anything okay uh, and in fact uh, it uh, so uh, for the the Hamel basis this is impossible but for the uh, for the graphs uh, it is possible okay uh, for, any uh, for any for any Borel graph for any Borel graph okay. And uh, yeah, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and, um, and but then you can have other, you know, you can look at uh, uh, other uh, um, kind of model theoretic uh, issues, uh, and they all have this. Uh, there's for all of them, there's this coherence uh, problem, okay, which really has to do with how E1 is related to that, uh, to the, how the equivalence relation E1 is related to that model theoretic problem, okay. Well, I'm out of time, so I better stop here. Okay.